Warmer today. All right, Charlie, shall we uh, start today's events? Certainly. I will stop sharing the screen and put you front and center. And the floor is yours, Charlie. First, I want to start off by bragging on my new webcam. I just finally bought one. It's a Logitech C920. It's supposed to be full high definition. So I hope that it's clear because the ones I had before, I look like just sort of like a little fuzzy blur. Uh, as I recall, but anyway, I, I think I'm finally moved hurriedly into the 1990s. So <laughs> I've got something now that works. So we are here, and I want to say that our call for entries has gone out, and we are back in the awards business. And I say that because you've probably seen it. I hope you have. If not, they find it on the web. Uh, check your email. It's out there. And what I want you to do is share this with other government offices. Even if they're not in the club, doesn't matter. You can send it to communications group, police departments, if that's city, county, whatever it might be, health departments. If they're putting out good communications, they might as well put their wares out there and see how well they do compared to everybody else. Uh, I'm not trying to get you more competition, but I think uh, if you know people doing work, please uh, forward that email to them. We certainly welcome as part of this. We also want to say congratulations to a young lady named Sadie Bograd. She won our scholarship. We haven't presented it to her yet, but she's from Paul Lawrence Dunbar. That's in Lexington High School. She's going to Yale this fall, of all places, Ivy League. But when she's done, she says she wants to come home. And that's one of the things I think we really like about that is by helping her, we ultimately help ourselves down the road and having her come back and tell the stories of Kentucky as only she can. So congratulations, Sadie Bograd. You'll hear more about her. I'm ready to hear about Doe Anderson. David, did I miss anything? Uh, no, the um, early bird deadline is May 14th on the award or on the awards, and the final deadline is June 4th. And we will send out some reminders. We've already sent out at least one, so we'll get back to that. But other than that, no, I think you you hit everything just great. Okay. So welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Um, we are lucky to have David Vautner, uh, the Executive Vice Chairman uh, from Doe Anderson in Louisville today. Uh, David is one of a handful of copywriters whose work resides in the permanent U.S. Congressional Record. Uh, he is a multiple EFI winner who has set performance benchmarks in categories ranging from automotive to bourbon to computer hardware. Uh, David's award shelf also includes a share of a one-show pencil, the ARF's Ogilvy Award, and the WARC Prize for Social Strategy. He is a graduate of Indiana University, try not to hold that against him, uh, with a degree in Germanic languages, and David and his family reside in Prospect, Kentucky. So David, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I will turn it over to you. The screen is yours to share. Thank you. No wonder I'm so tired all the time. Um, thanks for allowing me to join you. I've probably met some of you uh, in, in one or another of the many meetings that I've been in over the years in Frankfurt. But if not, uh, nice to make your acquaintance. Um, I'll just tell you a, a tiny bit about Doe Anderson. We are the oldest agency in the state of Kentucky. We've been around since 1915, uh, which we think, according to our calculations, makes us the third oldest independent ad agency in the country. So we've, we've been doing this for a while. We've been working with the state or the Commonwealth since the late 70s when uh, John Y. Brown hired us to uh, help market Kentucky, uh, the uh, economic, economic development program that he initiated uh, when he was governor. 
uh, Kentucky, the state that's run like a business. That was the, the first thing that we ever did. But we've worked on lots and lots of other projects over the years. We were the tourism agency uh, two or three different times, um, other economic development projects, and we've been lucky enough to, to be the agency that pitched and won the uh, state health exchange account back in uh, 2013. And uh, my colleague, Claire, has been working with me on that since the very beginning as well. Unfortunately, she is in a uh, fish and wildlife meeting right now, so she couldn't join us. She's uh, got her waders on at the moment. So. Uh, rather than show you guys a long PowerPoint, what I thought I would do is show you a couple of uh, video pieces as well as a case study that we created for the, the uh, Connect program uh, for our own website and, and to, to share with other entities across the country. So I am going to take control of the screen right now. Hopefully that will work. Unfortunately, you still have to listen to my voice because I was the voiceover on video, but uh, it's only about four minutes long. So I'll just play this through and then any questions that come to mind, uh, feel free to ask. Kentucky is among the reddest of red states, one that voted overwhelmingly against President Obama in 2012. So when Kentucky's Democratic governor decided early in 2013 that we would open a state-run health exchange, it was clear that selling Obamacare here at home was going to be a big challenge. After talking to uninsured Kentuckians all across the Commonwealth, it became clear that although they were against Obamacare, they desperately wanted quality, affordable health coverage for themselves and their families. So we set about detaching the many benefits the Affordable Care Act offered from the political rhetoric and the big government aura of Obamacare. First, we gave the program a simple, approachable name, Connect. It resonated strongly with Kentuckians who saw it as something created for them, not by some Washington bureaucrat. Then, we focused our communications on a simple, optimistic, reassuring message that persuaded the uninsured that it was a new day in Kentucky, one where everyone had the chance to obtain the health coverage they deserved. For everyone who ever had to use the ER as their primary physician, who had to go without regular checkups. For everyone who had to choose between medicine and a mortgage payment. For everyone who's been turned down for coverage or hasn't been able to provide it to their employees. For everyone who needs health insurance but hasn't been able to get it, a new day is about to arrive. Introducing Connect, Kentucky's healthcare connection. Quality healthcare coverage for every Kentuckian. We also dedicated a good portion of our budget to outreach efforts in cities and towns of all sizes and across demographic boundaries. Even better, the Connect website worked on day one. The results were phenomenal as Kentucky became a national role model in enrolling uninsured citizens across every category. Even the president took note of Connect as he invited the governor of Kentucky to the 2014 State of the Union address where he singled out Kentucky for the remarkably, and perhaps a bit surprisingly, successful launch of his signature policy initiative. And if you want to know the real impact this law has had, just talk to Governor Steve Beshear of Kentucky, who's here tonight. Now, Kentucky is not the most liberal part of the country. That's not where I got my highest vote totals. But he's like a man possessed when it comes to covering his Commonwealth's families. As the campaign entered its second year, signups continue at a rapid rate, and Connect tote bags were quite possibly the main attraction at this year's Kentucky State Fair. So that was actually the case study that we created for the EFI Awards in 2015, uh, which we entered and which uh, you may have heard we won, uh, which was pretty cool thing. It was, it's funny though, because we that campaign that we ended up producing was one of four that we brought into the, the pitch, if you will, you know, the competition between agencies to, to get the assignment. And I remember as we were walking out of the room at the end of the meeting, somebody in the back of the room said, and I could just barely hear it as I was walking out saying, I don't know, I'm not too crazy about those cartoons. <laughs> But fortunately, uh, we won the business and uh, we were able to do some research all over the state. And uh, 
the notion that is in a lot of the work of this of this sun rising you know above above the horizon really really emotionally connected with people and this notion of it being a brand new day and the way that we had had rendered it was in sort of an illustrated style and people really dug it and uh, we were able to get it in front of the cabinet secretary at the time and she just said instantly this is where we're going this is what we're going to do so we got lucky <laughs> Uh, that 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 we found a receptive audience to it, but the reason that we did it was we saw what a lot of other states were proposing, and it just felt to us, as we said in the case study, that a, a lot of stuff just felt it felt too political, it felt too kind of snarky, and and you know trying hard to be humorous, and we just wanted we wanted to do something that felt really optimistic and reassuring, and that people could see themselves in without seeing someone in it that they didn't like for whatever reason and that's why that's why we landed on on the cartoons because it's it's hard to hate a cartoon uh so um obviously the the reception and the results were pretty strong so uh if you have if anybody has any questions about where we got you know to by 2015 i'd be happy to answer them otherwise i will uh, i'll pick it up uh in 2019 or 2020 early 2020 uh when we kind of got the gang back together No questions. All right. So I, will. Yeah, I, I had a question about the animation. Was that done simply so that you could have all the elements in it you wanted without having to go to the expense of screening people and hiring people and hiring a cast and a set and a producer, the whole bit? Is it cheaper to do animation than it is video production? Um, if you want to do it at a really high level of polish and, and this, you know, the animation company that we work with a lot at Doe and I've worked with, you know, at, at previous stops along the way in my career is based in London. And they're, you know, one of the top studios in the world, but for the amount of money that we had, it would just, it was a much, much more efficient way to deliver a very high quality product than shooting live. Because as you said, you know, it's, you've got casting and you, you know, if, you're going to go union, which is where all the good, you know, the best talent is in terms of actors and actresses. It gets very expensive. And if somebody, you know, doesn't perform up to your expectations, you're kind of, you know, you're, you, you don't have a lot of alternatives <laughs> because you can't go back and reshoot without enormous additional expense. With illustration, you can change it and adapt it pretty much at any step along the way to finish. And, and to me, and to us, that, that's just a much more flexible way of working, especially if you're going to have a lot of constituents who have a point of view about what the finished product looks like. So, For health in Kentucky, it resonates. Now, forgive me, I don't know. You did the Team Kentucky? We did. We and did it, it has, this, work as well. has the same look, the same feel. And I think we remember that from all those years ago that we still connect with it. Yep. So to speak. Yeah, we, we love a, animation. I'm sorry. And I had a question as well. Um, as a social worker, I have been taught that Obamacare is not an appropriate thing to call uh, the healthcare system, um, but that is okay. It's, I, I was taught that that was politically incorrect. So I was just wondering <laughs> about that terminology. Well, we never, we never used it in any kind of consumer facing. Uh, communication. What I what I showed you was was a, an awards show submission for you know people in in our industry, and we knew that it was a real you know shorthand way to say oh yes Obamacare is a highly politicized word to your point, uh, but we would yeah we would have never used it in any of the advertising because we heard you know I'm, I remember I was at the Bourbon Festival one year working the booth the Connect booth handing out the tote bags and all the information stuff. You know, people coming up to us and saying, literally, I hate Obamacare, but boy, do I love Connect. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> what, what more is there to say than that? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Any other questions? All right. I will share the case study that we created for the second phase of the campaign.
Can everybody see that? Yep, you're looking good, David. All right. So as we all know, we went we went off the air in 2015, 2016, uh, due to a, a change in hey, the uh, David, occupant. Uh huh. Actually, we are seeing a minimized screen. We also still see your background, the island. I don't know if that's the intent. Oh, let me uh, make it full screen. How's that? There we go. Now we got right. it. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's no fine. problem. Thanks. Catalina Island. Uh, so anyway, as as you all remember, 2015, there was a change in administration and the, uh, the governor, the incoming governor was very vocal about not not believing that Connect was a worthy use of tax dollars. So we, you know, everything shut down um, even after the enormous success. So we waited for four years and there was another election and uh, fortunately it went favorably uh, for fans of of the state health exchange and uh, so Kerry called us uh, in early 2020 I think it was it was about a week before everything shut down we went to uh, to Frankfurt and met and, and the decision was pretty easy to make that we were going to bring it back as connect uh, given the enormous response and the amount of money that we had spent uh, building the brand so it was just a question of what the messaging was going going to be and since the decision was made that it was going to expand from just being a health exchange into a, you know the resources and benefits program as well uh, we decided that the the kind of overarching idea if you will was you know connect is back and we brought back up in the sense that we have now you know much more uh, in the way of resources that are available as part of the program. So this this is just a little case study that we built for our own website. We knew that we had to get uh, awareness back at a very high level very quickly. So that uh, was consequential with the media choices that we made. There was a lot, a lot of broadcast, a lot of television, as well as a lot of paid search that would get people aware and, and get them interested and get, get them investigating all the options very quickly. So. As you know, um, I'll just kind of read through a little bit of this quickly. The economic crisis of 2020 left more Kentucky families needing access to assistance programs than ever before, and many of them didn't didn't really know where to start. So we needed to let them know that Connect, which was something that they probably understood as having something to do with healthcare, now meant a whole lot more uh, than it had originally. And so, as you can see, with some of that animation there, we've updated it, even though we used the same animation studio and a lot of the same cast, if you will. Fortunately, they were all available to work for us. Uh, you can see some some uh, acknowledgement of the, the situation with the green lights, for instance, which was something that the governor's office really encouraged us to add. So uh, just scrolling down here a little bit, you'll see some of the aspects of the campaign that we managed from the messaging, the strategy, and determining what the key messages were going to be all the the copywriting and art direction design we created the digital ads um, based on the the animation that the studio provided us um, some illustration we actually did ourselves based on the characters uh, that we had had already developed um, we did all the all the media strategy and, and the buys we did media relations to the extent that that was possible uh, given the fact that you know, people weren't leaving their houses but we did come up with a couple of interesting ideas along those lines and then all the all the SEO and SEM, we also managed that as well. So pretty much did the whole campaign from soup to nuts. And the results, we'll get, just do those really quickly before I show you the case study video. In about two and a half months, we managed to generate 147-ish million impressions, which considering that there are only, only four and a half million people in Kentucky, that's, that's a pretty good... Uh, Repetition, uh, so people really got the message, which was the idea to, to show, make sure that they saw it more than once, so that it, so that it penetrated. Uh, almost a million calls to the helpline, which ultimately was what we were trying to make happen. We wanted to get people to, to a helpline and to the website. And to that point, we also worked again with Deloitte to make sure that the website was consistent with the other campaign elements and that the and that the website worked. As many of you will remember. That was the problem with a lot of these exchanges back in you know, 2013, 2014, the websites were non-functional. Hard to get people to register if the website doesn't work. 
Uh, we had a very high uh, completion rate in the video elements. 98% of the connected TV uh, people watch all the way through, which is great. That means that your message is compelling enough that people are going to stick around. And then a 31% paid search click-through rate, which is way above average. So obviously people were very receptive and waiting for this message uh, to arrive. So I'll just take you through this quick case study video that we created to sort of pick up where we left off. At Joe Anderson, doing work we can be proud of that gets recognized by our peers is one of the best parts of our job. When that work actually helps improve the lives of our fellow citizens, that's even better. In 2013, when Kentucky's then Governor Steve Bashir called on his administration to open a state-run health exchange under the Affordable Care Act, we were given the assignment to create the brain for our Commonwealth's homegrown version of Obamacare. We called it Connect and did it ever, driving down the number of uninsured by the highest rate in the country, gaining access to affordable health care for over half a million Kentuckians, and being hailed as a national model by none other than the O in Obamacare himself. For the health of Kentucky, it was a great three years. For us, it led to our first gold effort, the only one ever awarded to an agency in Kentucky. And then, the Connect show was canceled. Just like that, a new administration in Frankfurt shut off all marketing as it moved to dismantle the state exchange to fulfill a campaign promise. But there's always another election. And four years later, Governor Andy Bashir, son of Steve, announced the Connect would be revived in the face of one of the greatest public health crises in our nation's history. The new Connect not only offers health insurance, but a host of other resources and benefits for Kentucky and the need. And once again, Joe Anderson was chosen to reintroduce Connect to Kentucky. So we got the gang back together and picked up right where we left off. While the program is still getting up and running, early results indicate that the communications program has done exactly what it was designed to do. Quickly generate mass awareness that Connect was back. Turn that awareness into understanding and interest about all the expanded Connect could do for all of our target audience drive website visits and calls to the Connect helpline, and do it all extremely efficiently. We're on a state government budget after all. With significant increases in call volume, click-through rates well above benchmark, and audio and video completion rates as high as 98%, it seems that the reconnection is strong. And at the end of the day, knowing that our work is doing even a little to help Kentuckians live and feel their best, makes us feel pretty good too. So that's just a little self-promotion <laughs> that we did for the agency to let prospective clients know, you know how, how the campaign came to be and, and how well it worked. Uh, but it seemed like it was an appropriate thing to show here because it, it tells, tells a good chunk of the story in a fairly painless way. Um, the notion of reinflating it, bringing the balloon back out of storage and, and reinflating it and then having it be joined by those two other balloons that represented the other two pillars of the program was really compelling to us and it seemed to be you know well responded to by the public as well. And there's a fourth balloon in the in the waiting uh, and we're hoping that that'll be uh, set aloft soon. So here's just a, a few of the other elements of the campaign. Uh, some of these are from the original campaign, uh, but were adapted for use uh, this, in the second phase. Uh, obviously, given the fact that nobody was leaving home, the, uh, the public outreach strategy was pretty tricky. We did uh, do some work with the uh, Lieutenant Governor's office, uh, which, which was really great. We got some great uh, outreach and some media opportunities in that regard. And here, just to show you a few of the other pieces, some outdoor where we tried to customize it and really localize it because we find that people respond really well when they feel that they're being spoken to directly. It's uh, something that we've stolen from our Maker's Mark work over the years. Uh, we also had seen in the in the the time frame between 2013 and, and today just the the massive increase in in uptake 
uh, of all things digital and mobile. So we had to make sure that whatever we did uh, was easily uh, very user friendly on mobile devices, which we did. Uh, so that whether you're on your iPad or your phone or, or even on a laptop, it would be easy to access. And as I mentioned, uh, given the limited availability, we couldn't go to the chicken festival anymore, or we couldn't do it last year at least. Uh, finding some of those public outreach opportunities was still important. So uh, we got the Lieutenant Governor involved. We also did lots of branded merchandising to the extent that we could do that safely and got that sort of thing out. This is a, a shot from, I believe it's a, it's a drugstore, but it was also in uh, Bed Bath & Beyond and that sort of uh, retail locations across the state. So, so really kind of picking up where we left off. We knew that we had something that worked really well. So there was no reason to change it for change's sake. Uh, and it's, it's just, you know, when, when you have something that works, it's always really, the temptation is always there, especially among advertising people to do something different because that's what we like to do. But in this case, not changing it was, was definitely the right move. And uh, one last thing, uh, one little bit of good news is that the, the tote bags that everybody loves so much that were featured in the New York Times are coming back. We just got some designs approved and uh, hopefully once everyone is vaccinated and people are out and about again, uh, we'll be able to distribute those on a wide level because uh, we know that people really like them and they're a great little portable, little portable ad campaign uh, for Connect. So that's really all I uh, prepared. That's all the content I have. But again, if you have any questions about where we are right now, uh, I will be happy to answer them. We, we are about to get started on new content for uh, later this year, uh, but we haven't gotten that official kick off yet but we're real excited and I, I just have to say that in all the things that I've done in all the years that I've been in this business I've worked on Coke I've worked on Jeep I've worked on Chevrolet uh, I've worked on MakerSpark for many years uh, this has just been about the most gratifying thing that I've ever done because the campaign is really good and it's fun and it has a positive feel and it and it works so it's you know doesn't get any better than that <laughs> so thank you for allowing us to do it David, can you comment on the, the I'll just call it the blue Band-Aid commercial that's come about with COVID and what Kentucky is looking to do beyond the vaccine commercial through you? Uh, we don't really have any specific plans for what the messaging is going to be post that. I mean, right now we're, we're super focused on making sure that, you know, people are getting the vaccinations. One, one thing that we learned, again, when we pitched that business uh, was that we needed to make sure that all the communities across the state were spoken to and, and that we listened really well before we developed any of that uh, communication because we we learned from some other folks' mistakes uh, that, that the people need, needed to feel included in, in those communications. So the work that you're, that you're seeing right now uh, is the result of that effort. We did a lot of outreach to uh, minority and underserved communities uh, to make sure that, that we heard their apprehensions and their, and their needs, and, and hopefully that's reflected in the work. So that's, that's what our focus is right now, where it goes from here. I think we're, we're waiting for next steps. Is this all produced by the, the same group? No, uh, the animation uh, people you had mentioned uh, over London? Nope, we didn't use them. The, we didn't have the kind of budget, uh, nor did we have the time that's necessary to put something like this together. Uh, creating a spot uh, in the Connect campaign generally takes us uh, around eight weeks to produce, and we knew that we didn't have that kind of time. So we, we did some animation. If you remember, part of the campaign was animating the two figures that are on the state flag. And we did that in house with uh, with talent here here at the agency, and we were able to do that really quickly and uh, on a much more cost efficient basis. Hey, David, we have a question from Amy Wallet. Hey, David, um, did with the relaunch, did you find that you had to re-educate um, people what Connect was, or did you find that people still kind of had some memory and understanding of what Connect was? Uh, we, in the discussions that we had, and we did do a little bit of, of research as well, we, we learned that, you know, people, most people remembered Connect, you know, it had very high brand awareness. Uh, they remembered it as, as insurance, as health insurance. But as I said earlier, we needed under, we needed to explain to them 
that it now stood for a whole lot more, which was the idea behind adding those two other balloons that are, you know, labeled benefits and resources. Uh, so that people understood that it was a much more comprehensive uh, offering than it had been first time around. Thanks. Uh, we also have a question from Johnny Martinez. You want to go ahead and unmute Johnny and ask? Yes, thank you very much. Um, David, a couple times you've mentioned uh, polling and research. Uh, how do you guys go about getting that information, the background and demographic information that you use to kind of base some of your decision making on? Um, we, you know, we have a, a pretty robust research group here at the agency. So part of it is we, we also subscribe to lots of research and insight services. Probably we have more of that uh, on, on hand than any other agency uh, in Kentucky. So some, some of it is, you know, what we call desktop research where we know basic you know, demographic trends uh, by reading reports. But a lot of it is getting out into the field, and we partner with a number of, of research and insight firms here across the state. We, we also work with you know others that are not within Kentucky, but for this for this purpose, it you know just made more sense to do it locally. And we recruit people who are uh, you know in the target groups that we're trying to reach, and we bring them in, and you know we have what we call focus group sessions and, and talk to them, and we uh, we'll expose them to all sorts of stimulus material, be it, you know, logo options. That's, that's how we landed on the Connect logo. Connect was not the only name that, that we uh, developed, you know, as an option, but that was the one that people told us loudly and clearly was their, was their preference. Out uh, of curiosity, what were some of the other names? You remember? Oh, most of the other ones were, were not memorable. They, they were much more sort of functionally based, you know, because there was a line of thinking that we needed to be much that we needed to be very, you know, sort of prescriptive and obvious in what we called it, but but people just really they love the idea of connect, uh, and, and I I have to confess that I was a bit of a skeptic about that name myself because when I first looked at it, it looked like something that was going to be prone to being mispronounced, but but people got it, so <laughs> so luckily uh, we didn't listen to me in that regard. Uh, but yeah, it's just a question of of having the resources that can that can reach out to the, the different demographic groups that we know that we need to talk to and bring in representatives and, uh, and then give them good stimulus material and, and again, listen really hard to what they had to say. Um, we try not to take it too literally um, because that, that tends to result in, in advertising that feels like it was created by a committee, but, but you need to really you know, listen to the trends and, and when you hear something over and over again, you have to take it seriously. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Sure. Any other questions? If you don't want to speak out, you can certainly put it in chat. And we'll present the question as well. I have one, though I'm not exactly sure how to phrase the question. I work for public health, so I'm very aware of the hesitancy to get a vaccine. How would you compare the two com campaigns with respect to the resistance against them? Um, um, I think that, you know, in the, in the case of Connect, it was, it was a sort of, you know, a political divide. Um, but we, we found out very quickly, and I think we all sort of instinctively knew it, uh, what the basic actual offering was, was something that was very appealing to almost everybody. You know, the, the toughest group to convince was what we called at the time the invincibles. You've probably heard that phrase before. These you know young people who think that they're never going to get sick or they're never going to get into an accident. Uh, they they were the toughest nut to crack. Um, but basically, if you didn't call it Obamacare, <laughs> it, it was fine because you know everybody understands pretty much the benefits of public, you know, or of, of health insurance. Um, you know, protecting yourself against, I guess, a catastrophically expensive illness. Uh, in in terms of the vaccine, that that was a different story because we had groups, as you probably know, who, uh, you know, for a lot of valid reasons, um, were really convinced that the vaccine was not a good thing. Um, so we fortunate are fortunate that we have a lot of connections in some of those communities, and we reached out to some of the leaders of those communities and got them to to organize again, some focus group sessions where we, we listened really hard to what they had to say. 
And we had the idea that if we could engage some of those folks in the actual communications, and, and you probably see that, um, for instance, Edgardo Mancia, who's a friend of mine, um, who's the, the head of uh, Americana Center, we actually got him in one of the TV spots and one of the ads. And those, you know, those authority figures go a long way to reassuring people that if, if they're going to do it, then, then it's probably okay for me to do it too. So I know that the, the numbers are not exactly what we would like them to be right now, but it, but it seems like it's, it's going in the right direction. Does Doe Anderson work with other state government agencies or states? Uh, and we're not at the moment. We have in the past. We, when we didn't have Kentucky tourism, and we don't uh, have it at the moment, although we'd be more than happy to, to, to take it again. We worked with um, West Virginia tourism for many years. Um, I think we've done some things in the state of Indiana over the years. Uh, we work, we have an office in Columbus, Ohio, uh, because we have a big private healthcare client up there, Ohio Health, which is the biggest uh, health care system in central Ohio. We've done some small projects um, with aspects of the municipal government there. We, we've done a couple of projects here and there. We did a thing for... Uh, traffic safety or anti-drunk driving in the state of Georgia seven or eight years ago. Uh, but, you know, by and large, our, our greatest experiences is here, here at home. Let me ask two, a two-part question. One is, what else have you done that we know you for? And maybe this would be national or regional advertising, slogans, whatever it might be. And how is, how does Kentucky fare as far as being open to creativity in their advertising? Okay, um, first part, uh, as an agency, Doe Anderson is, is you know, probably best known uh, for Maker's Mark. We were the only agency of record, which is sort of the technical term or the industry term for having the bulk of, of a client's account. We've been working for them since 1972 and uh, when we started with them, they were a thirty. They were selling thirty thousand cases of bourbon a year. Now they're selling uh, in excess of two million. So, anything you've ever seen as you were driving uh, through the state of Kentucky, a billboard that might have made you smile or laugh or scratch your head, not quite understanding what it was about, <laughs> uh, we did that. Any television spot that you've seen, uh, you know, it's only been the last ten years or so that. Uh, Hard liquor was allowed to be advertising TV, but Makers was one of the first uh, to jump into that. So if you've seen that, that was our work. Everything on social and print magazine ads forever, uh, we've been doing that. So as far as as far as Doe Anderson is concerned, that's probably the thing that you're most likely to know. Um, although we've worked, we've worked for Louisville Slugger for years. We've worked for Druthers Restaurants, for those of you who are old enough to remember that. We we launched Billy Beer. That that. Is probably something that almost none of you will remember, but back in the late 70s, Jimmy Carter's brother was a known beer enthusiast, and uh, he had his own brand of beer for a while, which we, we launched across the country. As far as my career is concerned, as I said, I, I worked on some Coke projects. Um, I did a spot in Germany with John Bon Jovi uh, in about 15 years ago. If you remember a Chrysler campaign that featured Celine Dion, I, I, that was my campaign. I worked on that. Worked on Blockbuster Video for many, many years. Um, if you remember the, the uh, guinea pig and the rabbit that were, would sit across the street commenting on what was going on in Blockbuster, that was something that I worked on. Um, and, and then if you're really old, you might remember that we did a campaign here at Doe Anderson for many years for Ashland Oil uh, promoting the value of education and teachers specifically. And that was a campaign that got a lot of notice. Um, the uh, leaders of Ashland Oil were invited to the White House uh, because of the success of the campaign. And that one of the spots from that came is, campaign is the one that was read into the congressional record by none other than Mitch McConnell, but don't, don't hold that against me. Uh, but it, that was also a really successful campaign that at the time, uh, was was pretty widely seen. In terms of how receptive Kentucky is to creativity, I think, you know, Kentucky tends to be a conservative state, but, um, you know, we, we feel like we, we get our share of really fun stuff out there in the world. I think this Connect campaign 
was really unexpected for the category. It certainly wasn't what, what any other state did. And I think that that's part of the reason why it got noticed so much, why you know people paid attention to it. <laughs> Uh, and they responded really positively to it. So I think, you know, if if you're a native of Kentucky, you've seen that the state has become much more, you know, progressive. And there are lots of ways to just, you know, to define that. But I think, you know, if you, when I lived here in 1985, I would have never imagined that the Hotel 21C would be, you know, down the street from my office. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty cool, pretty creative place. And, you know, there are two of them in Kentucky. So I think that, you know, we're, we're very creative. Sometimes we just have to work a little bit harder at it. David, did you see what I just held up? I did not. Oh my God. <laughs> that is on my bar. I, I have a few, few old relics on my bar, but I got that from my grandmother, but I do remember my dad having some of that as well. So that's great. <laughs> uh, the theme line was uh it was out of the out of billy's mouth it said i think it's the best beer i've ever tasted and i've tasted a lot <laughs> oh that's great any other questions for david before we let him go it appears um, not oh well oh. i was I was just going to say, I think it's funny, um, your life has, or your career has intertwined with my life. I remember being a child about eight years old and the can of Billy beer in the cabinet exploding and scaring us to death that a gunshot had went off in our kitchen. Um, and of course, I was assistant manager at Blockbuster and I remember Carl, uh, I think he was one of the hamsters. I still have my little stuffed hamsters from when I worked at Blockbuster. They, they actually did stuffed animals. So I, I find it interesting how you, how uh, your career has intertwined into my life. <laughs> uh, Carl and, and I'm Ray. Sure it's had an effect on a lot of others. Carl and Ray were the voices of uh, James Woods and Jim Belushi. They were great. <laughs> they were fun to work with. And then later, the last thing that I ever did was block with Blockbuster. We did an animated campaign for them as well. Uh, it was the sort of their last gasp against Netflix, which actually was was being it was very successful until the the new ceo ceo pulled a plug on it and uh, the voice for that was alec baldwin who was extremely interesting to work with <laughs> uh until oh, we, yeah i'm we sure had to, we had to fire him because i don't know if you guys remember when he he left this really nasty voicemail for his daughter a few years ago and uh that got his his ex-wife released it <laughs> to the press so we had to fire alec over mm. over a weekend but we were lucky that we got to replace them because we were we were short on time. We had to record some new voiceovers for this campaign. And they basically said, David, just pick anybody you want. And I picked Albert Brooks, who uh, is one of my favorite comedians, who you probably know best as uh, Nemo's dad from the uh, mm -hmm. Mighty Nemo movies. And that was a lot of fun. He's, he's a very, very funny, entertaining guy. Well, thank you for your work. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank, thanks for paying attention. Any other questions for David? I will stop sharing then. Thank you, sir. I do appreciate you showing up uh, and uh, presenting for us. It was, uh, it, was, it was very interesting and educational. Um, thank you so much. Charlie, do you have any last words? Don't forget the call for entries. It's out there. Kentucky government does some pretty darn wonderful things. And we uh, want to see your, your entries for this year's awards. So do that. Uh, David, you're still there. And if you're doing, David can enter too. I'll yeah. To investigate that. You are certainly welcome. Send David the call for entries. So that's, that's my basically. The last thing I have to say. Next, right. is it next month we have Carl? It is. I am sharing it right now. So our next Lunch and Learn is going to be May 5th uh, at 1130. Uh, so a little bit later in the morning. And it will be Carl Napy. And go ahead, uh, Charlie, if you want to give Carl's a, a great teaser. Carl's a great guy. If you know Carl, he is the voice of the Kentucky Wildcats. Not on the radio, not TV, but the stadium. 
if you've gone to a football game there at Kroger Field, you hear the voice resonating out, and he will always say, first down, Kentucky, or touchdown, Kentucky. That voice works for the UK press office. It's a whole group there, marketing and press, and is involved in pretty much everything, not just sports. And uh, he'll be along next month to talk about everything from vaccine rollouts to trying to get the word out via public media and press releases, and radio, and however, to get to all the students during the pandemic, a gunman at the hospital. There's a lot of news that centers around the University of Kentucky. And Carl will be here, and he'll he's a great guy, and he'll certainly talk to you about any and all things UK. Excellent. Well, I have nothing else for today, so we are ending just a little bit early, but I thank each and every one of you for coming today, and uh, keep the awards in your mind, and we look forward to seeing you next week, or next month, sorry, next month, May 5th. Yeah. All right, thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Take care. Thank you all.